Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Teddy Roosevelt time. I'm your host, Teddy B, bringing knowledge, truth, and information once again. We have a tremendous episode in store today, destroying everything that you thought you knew about climate change. Teddy B is here to chop down all your preconceived notions and previously held opinions about our wonderful, magnificent, unstoppable planet Earth. Now you need to ask yourself, have you ever really looked at the history of the magnificent, unstoppable planet Earth? Planet Earth ain't on fire right now, it's lit. It's, oh my God, what is that? Planet Earth is lit like the Statue of Liberty on acid turning into a kaleidoscope. You can see I just learned this skill since the last Teddy B episode. Now listen up, the thing that you need to worry about the most is a volcano. A volcano has more power than you could possibly imagine. Have y'all ever heard of Planet Earth, Snowball Earth mode? Oh yeah, take a look at that on Google. Snowball Earth happens when a volcano shoots out ash, covers the whole Earth, surrounds the Earth, and it turns everything, even at the equator, into a snowball to the point where there's two miles thick of ice. Two miles thick around Snowball Earth. That's how crazy a volcano can impact the climate. Now, when you combine the power of a volcano with other things, do you understand how many times the Earth has been hit by an asteroid? Now take a look at this. Have you ever heard of the sound and the power of a volcano? Listen to this shock wave. Watch out for the shock, it's coming. Now check this out, this is a meteor. So not even an asteroid, just a little itty bitty meteor. This is in Russia. Uh, Schiff will probably blame this meteor on Trump winning in 2020. So here comes this meteor. I think it's gonna make a sound here, hold on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now that was just a little bitty meteor. Imagine, and this is just a little bitty asteroid. I'm talking about, imagine if a big ass asteroid, and they're saying an asteroid this big has hit the earth. This is how the dinosaurs might have died. Imagine this thing hitting the earth. How insignificant does a plastic straw versus a metal straw versus a plastic bag versus a reusable bag electric car versus a gas power car and the face of this thing blowing up with a lava uh, wave. Look at the size of that wave. I mean, it's devouring full continents. There's asteroids floating around the universe. Jesus Christ, look at that thing. Now, how insignificant does human cause climate change look in the face of that? I mean, come on people. When you look at the 4.6 billion year history of Earth. Oh, this is a quick interlude. All of the beats for today's episode are made by Teddy Roosevelt. That's teddyroosevelt.com. So look at all the lies that we've seen from Science and Mechanics Magazine, The Ice Age, The Cooling of America, Time Magazine. You better be worried all the time, says Time Magazine. Uh, frying pan with the earth on it from Time Magazine. Oh my God, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at some actual articles. This was from August, 1969. These first two articles are a Stanford University biologist. It doesn't get much more credential than this. This is in the New York Times. And this guy, Paul Elric, is saying that we must realize that unless we are extremely lucky, everybody will disappear in a cloud of blue steam in 20 years. That was 1969. So by 1989, every single human was supposed to be disappeared in blue steam. Same guy, Stanford University biologist, Paul Elric, um, is saying in the early to mid 70s that we have to hope that world famines of the next 20 years do not lead to nuclear war, thermonuclear war, and the extinction of the human species. 
This guy was predicting we were all gonna get evaporated into blue uh, steam. Here's another scientist, Washington Post. This guy is a NASA scientist, Dr. S. I. Rasul of NASA said the world was going to end in 50 or 60 years. In 1971, he said that because we were putting um, all this fossil fuels into the atmosphere, it was going to screen out the sun, temperature was going to drop by 6 degrees, and that was if we did that in 5 to 10 years. You have to ask yourself, why any real scientist, why would they call you a denier if you're just like, what causes changes to the Earth's climate over 4.6 billion years. I'm curious, what is the main cause? Because humans have only been around for 100,000, 200,000 years, and industry's only been around for 200 years. If you even question the science, you get called an intellectual outcast and labeled as a bad person. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are the beginning of a mass extinction. Let me show you two people who have a lot in common. A climatologist and a cl cosmetologist. Both of their professions start with the letter C and end with ologist. They also cannot deny what their profession's all about or else they wouldn't have a job anymore. If you ask Clarence the climatologist, hey Clarence, how's the climate? He's not gonna say same old, same old, fall, winter, spring, fall, you know, it's just, uh, different events, but it's the same old, same old. The cosmetologist is gonna say, women should never wear makeup or do their nails or get their hair cut at all. They should just go with their natural beauty. They should never use makeup. And uh, climatologists are always the people being quoted in these articles. So of course they're gonna say the climate's changing because if it was the same old, same old, they wouldn't have a job anymore. I'm gonna tell you straight up, there's nothing that you can do compared to a volcano, an asteroid. You're simply not familiar with the 4.6 billion year history of Earth. It's very arrogant to think that out of the entire history of planet Earth, 4.6 billion years, something's gonna happen during the 100, if you're lucky, years that you're on this planet. So everyone needs to just chill out. How dare you? 